Bubbles up! Bubbles up! Bubbles up! Wait! One, two, three! Welcome to Bubbles up! Fuck, fuck, fuck system, all systems. Fuck the system. We had not sip, motorem. Był to fajna, fajna była to wycieczka, bo była przez Turcję, przez inne fajne kraje. No i tak pomyślałem, żeby tutaj przezimować. Wylądowałem, tutaj popracowałem krótko w KFC, ale mi wyrzucili. Przyjechał misiek, co było fajnym punktem zwrotnym. I zaczęliśmy się szwędać po wyspie, ale padał deszcz i z takimi zbieszonymi humorami przekroczyliśmy tutaj tą linię. No i tutaj ludzie Hello Travelers tam zagadali. No i tak zostaliśmy na buforku. No każdy tutaj jest inny. Everybody is here with, for so many reasons. With the borders, any kind of borders, not only this kind of borders, in the heart, in the mind. Uh, in the occupy of the buffer zone, there is many compartments. This is a compartment of the living team. So this is just an area where there is a tent of the people who stay in the buffer zone. In winter too, yes, we make a fire, but the night there is no fire in the, in the, inside the tent, so it's sometimes difficult, yes. And we put a system, you know, on the floor for having the tent dry. The people here are sitting, occupy the whole area in the purpose of unity of Cyprus, and in the purpose of anti-capitalism too. Hello, Mr. Chairman. The first occupation happened on the 15th of October, when there was the World Court of Occupation. We're on the green line in Cyprus in a derelict building that stood empty for 40 years until a group of activists took it over because they wanted an international space. And it's being turned into a living space and an activity center full of life where international people who believe in no borders can meet up and talk and discuss what's happening with their world. My name is Andreas and I'm from Cyprus. Hi, my name is Ali and I come from North Korea. Everybody's doing the jingle jangle. Hello, my name is Andreas. And my name is Elida. Everybody wants to rewind. Everybody's caught. I'm from Canada. It's the middle of the head of China Post. Everybody knows the heartbreaker. Everybody knows the undertaker. What do I care? What others do? What do I care? What others say? What do I care? What others do? 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 What do I care? Before the trouble started in Cyprus, people were living peacefully together. Up to 1956, 55, uh, there, in villages there was no difference between Greeks and Turks. There was uh, only difference in religion, when there were the Muslims and the Christians. Well, I'm not a politician, but as I know this story, <coughs> I read from books, I learned myself. 
people, the Greeks and the Turks, they never been enemies. They used to live together, okay? Before imperialism came here and started to, you know, steal the problem. Then everything started changing. First people were started to fear each other. And then in 1957, the, the real killing started. But then to find the real, how the real situation was, you have to go a bit back to see the roots of uh, the conflict. And the roots of the conflict actually is on nationalism. They made people enemies, each other, okay? Uh, many, many poor people killed for nothing, for, ne for no reason. This problem is, uh, is not between the people. It's not between the ordinary people. This problem about imperialism, okay? The main problem, they want to divide the island, so they fight with each other, the people, Greek and Turkish people, to rule the island better, to control, they to control the petrol in the Middle East, to control the area. The first time I'm, I was I heard of it was uh, six weeks after the 15th of October, and it was the weekend. Uh, people decided to stay over for a night. I came down here. I saw there were people with tables making coffee, you know, chatting, some making banners. Next day, somebody said, "Oh, we're going to stay another night." So I thought, "Oh shit, you know, I'll go back." Then uh, suddenly, from one night, it went to another night and another night, and soon it was a week and two weeks and we plan to stay until Christmas. There was at the beginning two, three tents, there was a table and then more tents and more tents and then it was getting winter so pallets started going under the tents to prevent the rain and nylon was being put over and like in like um, self-made construction style to kind of keep the rain out. It's a place where uh, the people of Cyprus can meet together, people from, the, from both communities. And uh, it's a place where they can uh, talk, they can change ideas about the future and can take activities going on. So it's like working like a bridge between the two communities. We've been living separated for so long we don't actually know about each other. We, we know about stereotypes, we hear stories, but we don't actually know even our, each other's sense of humor, for instance, which is very important. And in, if we want to have a solution, we, we have to know each other. And at the buffer zone, I believe, uh, one of the best things about it is it, it creates such a space that we actually live together and experience what, it, what has been missing in Cyprus for so long. We are a movement against capitalism and we are also a bicommunal uh, group that uh, we are trying to prove that we can be together as people without nations dividing us. Capitalism is a predominant system today, is that it has evolved through a long period of time. Um, so in order to develop uh, new systems and new realities, uh, it has to be a process. And I think now uh, with realizing that uh, the way things function now, it will lead to the destruction of the planet and maybe to the destruction of people as well.
I remember the day that they killed the Turks in, in the village. It's something that I will never forget. And I think it marked my life. I stay out in the fields playing the, for the whole day till the sun goes down and then we used to go to the house to eat. We finished playing that day after the sun went down and I went home being very hungry. And then as soon as I entered the house I smelled the potatoes that my mother was cooking with olive oil. I remember this smell of uh, the, the olive oil. And I just went to the room that we used for a kitchen. My mother was uh, just finishing the cooking. She put the potatoes in a plate and she started moving towards the other uh, room. I was following my mother. Actually, I was following the whole smell that comes out of or, or, okay, that came out of, uh, of the plate and then in the middle of the yard we heard the shots Cyprus is the role of violence. Uh, violence is all, all in our life. We grow up with violence in uh, in our neighborhood, in our uh, uh, school. Uh, the only thing the, that uh, people talking was uh, the Turks, the nationality, and the racist against these people. From '74 to 2002, we didn't have no clue. We didn't know who are the Turkish Cypriots because. The borders were closed. The last uh, five months here, we have the chance to come very close with the uh, with the Turkish Cypriot. I don't believe that they have no belief in their heart that they are enemies each other. You know, they don't have so feelings. Some of them, the racist ones, the fascist ones, okay, they have this feeling. But ordinary people, normal people, they like Turkish people. We like the Greek people because we are living the same condition, same atmosphere, same air, same sun. We were outside for uh, maybe a couple of months. The, the first occupation of the inside space happened. It was a small corner shop. So it was kind of became a bit of a coffee shop chill out area in a way. Uh, it was very cold so uh, some people could have a break going in, getting a bit warmer. And then in a few days, uh, also the second uh, space next to it got occupied. We decided in a general assembly to make a coffee shop in one, coffee shop and library, and the other to do uh, an activity center. And uh, like with the activity center, it was really fascinating and really moved the, the whole thing to the next level because suddenly we had a space Bywałem że tutaj warsztaty, miało to nawet jakiś ustalony harmonogram. W poniedziałek mieliśmy body language. The people who like you, they're just getting closer when you are talking to you. 
that's a kind of sign of indicator of interest because uh, you are trying to get make uh, physical contact and first step is yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Było również MMA, czyli nie wiem panie reżyserze jak to brzmi ładnie po angielsku Merital, mix of something, the arts of fight, something like this o, Również były warsztaty z tanga, w których nawet spróbowałem uczestniczyć, ale jako taki drewniany kloc niespecjalnie mogłem cokolwiek tam uczynić Choć okazja to świetna do bliższych poznań <laughs> To jest to, że Wojciech znajduje się za granicą, także musimy przejść przez kontrolę paszportową. Znaczy my, jako że mieszkamy w buforze, to akurat nie będziemy musieli przechodzić tej kontroli, ale generalnie będziemy musieli przejść przez granicę, ponieważ tam się znajduje toaleta publiczna, która generalnie służy nam jako łazienka buforowa. People started moving inside the building. It was in ruins. I went in before and everything was broken inside. It was dirty, there was loads of scrap everywhere. It was a ruin. People started slowly, slowly going in, taking one room, cleaning it, second room, third room. And then when a few people started getting in the rooms, work started to happening in the, in the building that I think we should uh, focus on more local uh, projects, like uh, developing community uh, projects would be the solution, I believe, because as an individual, for instance, I can't fight against the banking system. But I might create something within my community and I would actually get the results back, so that would keep me going and uh, hopefully it would uh, spread out and bring about a bigger, bigger change. I wasn't living there, but I was go going from time to time, going upstairs and seeing the changes all the time, people painting, cleaning. Every time I went in, I saw the building in better shape, uh, more lively, uh, people working together, and it was just a very nice thing to see. And I could also feel like the, the dynamics of the group really changed after that. Jest piękna energia, ludzie zaczęli pracować, wszyscy się wzięli do roboty za sprzątanie podwórka na buffer zone. Jest power, jest power tutaj. Podejrzewam, że buffer zone, ten budynek, który należy do kościoła, będzie wyglądał o wiele piękniej.
they don't have water. Uh, their electricity was cut off by the army, but they managed to get hold of a generator. So they have an office, they have internet, uh, they're collecting books for a library, uh, they are promoting any kind of art or cultural events. Tonight we had the poets who were also protesting at being marginalised and used by politicians. And as part of their protest, they did their poetry reading. Um, and it seems to be going really well. I never would have believed it could have lasted this long. I think another option could be uh, free language courses, for instance, maybe. I, would, I really want to learn Greek because it's a, language is a uh, mindset. Uh, and if I speak Greek, I would be able to understand uh, the other side better. There was a different environment. People were more open to speak. They were more comfortable being themselves because we all started knowing each other and be comfortable with each other. So for me, it really shows how working together on a common project is really, really beneficial. It for uh, se the sense of community, but also for the, the psychology of people. It makes them healthier psychologically as well. Buffer zone for me is a kind of therapy actually, and a kind of um, forgetting all the problems that capitalism made for us. And it's not even just uh, therapy, but it's also uh, something that we can do as an object, it's something real and we are trying to change something and that's, that feels perfect. The main concern is that the tourists are not disturbed and that the UN image is not damaged in any way. There is a slight problem, there's a lot of um, partying, uh, sometimes the music is loud. I don't want to promote buffer zone, they occupy as something that always uh, flowers blossom, butterflies fly around, because it, that's not life, that's not real. We work together, uh, we try to build things together, we laugh together, and at times we fight with each other, and that's okay. Buffer zone, fuck all problem, and fuck all system. <laughs> Tell me what will be here. Coffee shop. <laughs> I hope that if uh, politicians talk less and let the people uh, decide and make choices and uh, they don't decide for everything for us, uh, I, I think that uh, people would find their ways to be together and to bring peace in the world. Kasę to co zwyczaj mam jednak, bo sobie gdzieś zarobię i mam tej kasy. No to wtedy w sumie jest też fajnie, no nie, ale to wtedy jest zadowolenie z życia, owszem, ale to jest, no to jest takie chwilowe zadowolenie życia, tak jak możesz na przykład się upić, jesteś zadowolony, no nie, co nie zmienia całościowo to nie wpływa całościowo na zadowolenie z życia, tylko zadowolenie z chwili. A zadowolenie z życia wiąże się bardziej... 
jeśli na przykład musisz postąpić szybko, to jakąś decyzję zachować się odpowiednio i jesteś później zadowolony z tego, co zrobiłeś. Czyli jesteś zadowolony, że w twojej duszy tak i tak podyktowało ci coś, żeby to zrobić. To są rzeczy, które wywołują zadowolenie później z życia. Takie stałe, trwałe. Kiedy możesz odkryć przez swoje postępowanie, że masz dobrą duszę. Occupy Buffer Zone Movement was a is a great experience for me. I should say this, it's a unique experience. It's a unique education of life. It's a, something that has never been tried in Cyprus before. And uh, I think we made history by uh, doing it. They beat up people, they broke the doors down, they make the place look like it's bombard. They treat us like animals, they have us in the floor. Some of the people get beat up very badly. The first policeman who came just took me, I met like this. And the next who came after him, I was start hitting me. And I say, hey guys, calm down as well. Why you are acting like this? There is no reason as well. He came to my face, this clothes, and start shouting like, Turkey Cypriot, Turkey Cypriot, Turkey Cypriot. And they, suddenly I had a shot to my back of my head. And suddenly they put me on the floor and the one big guy police came and he kicked my chest very hard. And I start screaming very hard. I saw them... Uh, with our guns, uh, freighting the kids, hitting on the doors. They had this uh, tool for breaking in every door, so it was kind of freaky situation there with all the girls screaming, hitting, uh, shouting. Uh, it was like a terror attack. They give us no reason about it. They just say that uh, ah, we're gonna tell you later. They never say why they came or why they put guns on our heads. They put guns in a 16-year-old girl. I was a witness. I, this is impossible. Anti-terrorists put a gun in a 16-year-old girl. Is, I, I cannot. I have no words to describe this. Bravo! We are friends, we are brothers, and no police, no state, no, nothing can divide us, because it's here. Revolution! 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 Revolution!